Today we're doing something a little bit different. We've done before, but we've never done it on the channel. And, uh, you know, I have in the past expressed my dislike for short weekend trips. And, you know, as weekend warriors, we've really avoided doing just a Friday night, Saturday night, and then leave on Sunday type of trip. Uh, we've only done it once before. We realized it's too short. You can't really do and see as much as you typically see on our videos. This weekend especially, we've got a ton of stuff kind of crammed into it and things that are happening. And But in this instance, it kind of does make sense what we're doing. So let's, let's get to packing up and I'll try to explain some more as we go. for this trip is to take you over to Shawnee State Park which is very close to Bedford where we're at. Rachel's family has been spending some time there and uh, so why this makes sense for us is because since they're camping over there it makes it easier for us to spend a good bit of time with them over the course of the weekend if we're staying there as well. Luckily friends in this instance there's a lot less to pack because we're not taking the dogs with us so all I got to put in the truck is a couple of chairs and a tricycle. My uh, parents this weekend decided to watch the dogs for us because we were not able to book a pet site on such short notice. And uh, so that's the thing, you know, still with spontaneous camping trips, it is a little bit more difficult to get the site that you want. Uh, we didn't book this until like a week or two ago. But it is nice because we are getting to do one more Pennsylvania trip than what we had originally scheduled. Because if you guys have noticed, we haven't been in Pennsylvania much. Next weekend, we're not going to be in Pennsylvania either. And then uh, the following trip is not going to be Pennsylvania either. So it is nice that we're going to get to share another Pennsylvania adventure with you. And uh, I actually believe that we've got another one that we're working on doing towards the end of October. Which will be kind of cool if we get to do that, although it depends on the weather. You never know what you're going to get around here. It may snow in October. here at home and uh, generally I don't like leaving it parked out in front of the house here for a wide variety of reasons. It was barely over a week between trips so I didn't want to put this in the garage and then of course when we get back from this trip we'll be leaving for the beach in just a few short days so once again it'll just end up being outside but our ability to do this kind of thing especially with just a short weekend like this you know it's not like I had to yank it out of the garage and go through all that trouble. If you're a weekend RVer and you have to keep your rig in storage, going for just two nights, is it just adds another layer of hassle. Uh, you know, some HOAs and stuff, you can only have your RV at your house for like 24 hours or something like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're very fortunate. Still doesn't mean that this type of thing is easy, but it is doable and there are benefits to it. So we are headed over to Shawnee and uh, we don't actually know if we're going to be able to get in our site because it's only one o'clock and technically you're not allowed to check in until three, but sometimes they will allow you in early if there's no one in, in the site. There was someone in our site last night, so we don't know if they've left yet, but and that's the thing about Pennsylvania State Parks is check in and check out is at 3 o'clock, which is very convenient for us, especially this coming Sunday. Check out. 
if you're just doing a weekend, it does allow you to stay at the state park and actually do things on Sunday, which we're definitely going to utilize because that's going to be when we take you to some covered bridges. Of course, you know, if your kid's going to full day of school, you can't get there till three anyway, but pre-K for us is only half a day. What, um, what covered bridges are actually on that side of the county? I don't even know. Uh, almost all of them, actually. Some are drive-through. I hope we get to do at least one drive-through one, but there are some over there that will be walk-through only, so we'll park and walk across and explore them. From watching Cliff's channel, I've learned a good bit about the structure of the covered bridges and how they're made. And in past times, when we have gone to see a couple, it's not something I really paid attention to, but uh, it is something we're gonna look at in depth and try to talk about a little bit here. Just because I find the engineering of historic stuff and things that have been around for that long, I find it extremely interesting. So we'll take a look at that on Sunday. Not sure what we're gonna show you in between now and then, but we're almost to Shawnee, it's a very short trip. actually several hours and finally gotten ourselves all set up here at Shawnee and uh, pretty decent site here this is uh, 246 yes it is it's 246 uh, what's taken us so long is our water pump it wasn't working we filled up our tanks we tried to use the water and it wouldn't wouldn't turn on well it was making like a muffled sound uh, normally when when you use the pump it's real noisy well Turns out, uh, it was there's a diaphragm inside that pump, but I want to tell you this, because this is something that I've never known before, is that, that there's a diaphragm in there and it could stick. So you could rip the whole pump apart. I'll show you how to do it in an upcoming episode, but just know you don't have to spend $200 for a new pump. And uh, I know a pump is $200 because I called the place we've got the rig from and was trying to see if they had one in stock. I was going to go over and get it. Well. While we were ripping stuff apart, uh, Rachel's mom got on the internet, YouTube, and found out about that diaphragm thing, which, like I said, something I never knew before. So, just trying to pass information along to you so that you don't have to go spend $200 on essentially nothing. Because all you gotta do is take it apart, poke it with your finger, and she'll work. So friends, this morning we're headed up to Somerset County, actually. We're going to, what's it called? It's the Farmers and Threshermen's Jubilee in New Centerville, Pennsylvania. Obviously, Shawnee State Park is not the closest place to this. If you decide you want to hit up the Jubilee, Laurel Hill, and some other ones up in Somerset, I mean, there's plenty of campgrounds in that area. Every year we, we do try to go and make it. There's definitely some interesting stuff to see. They have a cider press and stuff. We're going to show you maybe some clips. It's kind of a family tradition from my family. We would go every year. Um, and we've, we've tried to continue that tradition um, once we've started our own family. Because there's antique tractors and a craft show and tractor pools. And um, what's this? It's the steam powered there are steam powered machines they're not trains like Sarah thinks they are but there's steam powered farm machinery there um, it's pretty cool there I think they have a sawmill that's yeah. steam powered and they have a uh, wheat uh, for, for the threshers there's a wheat machine that they make flour there as well I think it's the second weekend of September every year or, and it actually I think it goes on during the week too doesn't it it does it starts on a Wednesday or Thursday
so we're on our way back from New Centerville, just driving down 31, and we thought, why not give you a covered bridge today? Uh, this bridge, it was Turner? Turner Covered Bridge. I can see it coming up here. Yeah. Well, we'll flip the camera around. I do not believe we're going to be able to drive across this one because we look to be over the weight limit. bridges are a Pennsylvania staple. It's one of the things that especially in Bedford County here that people come here to see. This is very important to, to the people here. It's very important to the history of Pennsylvania. The reason these bridges are covered of course is because they're made of wood and if you leave wood exposed to the elements it's gonna rot and so the roof is, is kind of what preserves this. Uh, this design is what's called a burr arch truss. So you have your arch that goes across and it's connected to pylons underneath, which I'll show you. This one is painted white on the inside. Uh, sometimes they're natural wood. Red a lot. Yeah, generally on the outside they're red. Like I said, the weight limit on this one is three tons. Uh, my truck weighs about 7,000 pounds unloaded. So we are over, we cannot drive across. Uh, but I would like to find one on this adventure to drive across for you because I think that'd be cool. And friends, here is a good view of the arch. As you can see, it connects into your pylon here and then goes across. And so that disperses the weight amongst each side of the bridge. And I don't know if you can see, but underneath here, everything is still wooden. Some of these that you'll see have been restored and so they'll put steel beams across for added structural support. But in that, in those cases, that's not original. This one is all, it may not be the original wood because in many cases they've had to replace the wood on these as they do age. I mean, these are old, clearly. And you can also tell like they've reinforced the concrete here. This would have originally been all stonework, which you can see the original stonework. And it does have some steel holding the wood. But like I said, still the weight limit is three tons. So. Uh, some of the steel ones have a much higher weight limit, so yeah, you can drive your truck across, but pretty cool structure. Well, friends, good morning. It's Sunday, and uh, one of the things about being this close to home where we're camping is we were able to go to our own church this morning, so that was nice uh, because we haven't been going very much because we've been traveling. And so pretty much we've been away where I've been working like every Sunday throughout this whole summer. So that was nice, but now we're gonna take you on a tour of Bedford County and some covered bridges. These first couple, we don't exactly know where they are, but uh, we're gonna try to find them, try to do our best. Uh, one other thing though, I do wanna mention, uh, cause we did this yesterday, head on over to Ridgetop Orchards if you're in this area and it's during apple season. I think Ridgetop provides the apples to like all of Pennsylvania's grocery stores, but if you're here in Bedford County, you can get them significantly cheaper at the store, at the porch, and at Ridgetop, fresher. and fresher obviously because they're straight off the tree and they have much wider selection, possibly even some things there that you won't find in the grocery store. So uh, definitely good to check out, especially if you're here in the fall. And they do keep them because they have a way to preserve them through the winter. So they're usually open up until like January or something. So if you happen to be in Bedford County, uh, definitely check it out. Right now, it looks like we are going to Snook's Covered Bridge. Uh, we're on 56, very near Long's Outpost, which is something else we did yesterday. But we're turning onto Ridge Market Road. And supposedly this bridge is a mile back this road. I've never seen this one. So uh, it should be good. And then after we see Snook's, we're gonna drive back across past Long's and the other one is just that way. My goal is to see at least one that's different from the Burr Arch Trust that we showed you yesterday. Um, so we're hoping to find one with a king post. I think there's a third type of structure. I don't remember what it's called, and I don't remember if there's any of those in Bedford County. But I think going forward, 
you know we may do some more stuff like this if you enjoy it so let us know down in the comments if you like covered bridges or old historic structures let us know and then that'll drive us to do more stuff like this in our episodes but if you guys don't like it then let us know that too and then we won't do it this one looks traversable yes this one looks like we might be able to get across and i think we're under the weight limit so we're gonna do that So we are here. This is Snooks Covered Bridge. It is a burr arch truss, as you may have seen when we drove through. Looks to have probably been restored. This looks like some newer, newer stone work to me. And as you can see, this one, it does have steel reinforcement. So that's how the weight limit is. I think 12 tons, I think is what it says. So obviously, um, but you can see where the original truss would have, would have been anchored in and the arch would have been able to support the weight back in the day. Uh, this one is white, not red like you would normally see. So we gotta find a red one, friends. But, uh... I do not know what stream this is. I uh, might be able to look that up for you. I sent, I sent Rachel to look for a date that it might have been built originally or even to find out when it was restored. This bridge was completed in September 1883. The masonry work was completed for $273, and the county paid $880 for the superstructure. There's a sign down there that says when it was restored as well, and it lists the commissioners, but I didn't memorize those dates. Well, we'll go look at the sign. Rachel's going to head back to the truck and make sure the kids are okay. We are going to bring Sarah out to at least one of these. Uh, because I do think she would enjoy it, but as you know, my disdain for getting kids in and out of car seats is just not not practical because we're trying to do quite a few of these, and we do have to check out at Shawnee by 3 o'clock. Looks like it was restored in the 1990s, but like I said, they've you can't tell when you're driving across it, or unless you physically walk under there and look, you can't tell that it's any different than it was. All right, let's go try to find a red one. All right, friends, we have found you another burr arch truss, and it's not even red, so we're striking out. It does have a little bit of red on it. The, and then the arch itself they have painted on red in this one. I would imagine that this one probably has not been restored uh, since it does not allow for traffic there would be no reason to invest in it and obviously it can hold itself up and and us it we figured would be a great idea to bring the kids out on this one because there's no traffic because as you know it is difficult to control small children sometimes I'd like to know what this was originally used for. It could have originally been how nearby Route 56 crossed the river here. I'm not even sure what river this is, to be honest with you. It very well could be the same river. It's the same one as the... It's the same river? Same creek, yeah. Yeah, so the creek probably goes down across 56 and then meanders its way around. And so uh, I'll look it up for you. And I will make sure to include it somewhere on the screen. Let's see if we can't somehow get a good picture of this one for you, though. Alright, so we've got the whole bridge in the picture. And you can see, as I said, they've got the burr arch truss painted in red in this one, which is pretty cool. And it's fairly unique. It looks to be original stonework behind me. And so you can see underneath, this is all the original wooden structure, or at least it's wood. It looks like they have done a little bit of updating to the stonework underneath here. But you can see, again, where the, the arch is anchored into the ground there. And it's, it's a very cool design. And just like I told you yesterday, the roof is to protect all the wooden structure, because otherwise it would rot. 
And this is a very, very pretty creek coming down through here. This looks like it would be a fantastic fishing hole. I don't know if, don't know if they stock this stream, but if it is a trout stream, this would be a great, great spot. All right, my friends, one last look at Dr. Nisley's covered bridge. Now, I don't know where we're headed. It looks like, Rachel said, if we go over to 96 and uh, we take 96 across, which is also, there's some more orchards over that way if you are looking for apples and peaches and, and other good stuff. Sarah, what do you want? What? Friends, this is Dunnings Creek. Not sure why I didn't know about it. We're currently on Dunnings Creek Road, so it only makes sense. And it does, this is the same river that goes underneath uh, Snooks. finally found our red covered bridge and it's one with a different different design as you can see there is no burr arch on this one I do believe it is a king post and so what I what I think that center uh, right there that one there would be the king post and that's what that's what holds up the weight of the bridge this one I do believe is fully restored uh, it does have a fairly high weight limit, however, it does not have very much clearance height-wise. So, you know, my truck is basically the limit. If you have a real lifted pickup truck, you probably want to avoid this one. But, the with that weight limit, 13 tons I think it is, comes your restored with the steel beams. The steel beams holding it up. I mean, it is a beautiful setting, though, down here, too. I do not know what river this is, but um, I can probably find that out for you and tell you in just a minute. But, uh, but yeah, I do believe the original structure, your, um, your posts are all held up by these two main beams here, and that's what holds up the rest of it. Um, in the case of this one, it's a much shorter span, uh, you know, so it's not a very long bridge. And so, maybe that's why they didn't choose to do the arch with this one. This one was rehabilitated in 1998, and, um, but it was originally built in 1880, so essentially, you know, it lasted over 100 years in its, in its original form. It is one of Bedford County's oldest remaining covered bridges. And this bridge is one of only two multiple king post style bridges in Bedford County. So again friends, this middle one right here, this would be your king post. Now all of this wood, hopefully you can see, I mean all this stuff looks original. And this looks like it was made with like axes and stuff. So you can tell, like this piece of wood, it, it's from back in the day. So I'm pretty certain that most of the wood is original. So that's pretty cool. The only thing really not original is the steel holding it up. That's all we've got for Colvin's covered bridge. We're going to move along here. Uh, the one back on 96, Cuppet's covered bridge, that one is uh, on private property. And um, we didn't know that going into this. But I do want to make sure that you guys know if, if, if a bridge is on private property, you shouldn't be on it. Um, so that's why I didn't stop and film there, but I do have some shots, hopefully on the GoPro. We thought there was another one on 96, but, but we were wrong. So what we're gonna do now is, over in Man's Choice, there is uh, what looks to be the longest 
covered bridge in, in Bedford County. Uh, I don't know what kind of design it is, probably the arch. I don't know. I just know it's red and it has the tall signs. But we have driven past that one probably about a billion times so and uh, never stopped to look at it. So this is a good opportunity to do that. Let's get going. My friends, this is the last one we're doing here today. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what, what this one's called. Uh, I know it's off of Watson Road near Man's Choice. It is a Burr Arch truss and looks to be restored. Based on the weight limit, I have to imagine that it has steel girders underneath. And it does. Uh, you can tell though, this one is much, much longer than the other ones that we've looked at. This is the raised town branch of the Juniata. I can tell you that for certain. Uh, we used to actually have a cabin just down just down the way from here, not very far. A lot of good memories down here from growing up. We spent just about every weekend down here. So a lot of fun. And that's kind of really what got me into camping and wilderness and all that stuff. But again, yes, fur arch truss and you know, steel reinforced, new stone work behind me. Um, it is a very pretty bridge. Uh, this one is open to traffic and there is not a lot of good parking, Ooh. nor easy access to underneath of it. Because um, Sarah really wanted to get out and see this one, but I just don't think that that is a good idea. Uh, see if we can find out any more for you real quick here before the camera battery dies. I mean, you can tell this one is long. Uh, it's very, very long. It is red, friends. We were we were looking for a red one, and yeah, the one with the king post uh, was red also. But uh, this one here is very, very red. This wood, though, to me, does not look to be original. Uh, I don't know how old this bridge is, but you can tell this wood is is recent. It, it's not like hewn with an axe. You can see the saw marks in it. Uh, if I can show you but yeah you can see I mean this was this was milled with a sawmill not it's not hand hewn um, doesn't make it any less pretty or nothing but uh, yeah I don't believe that it is original a lot of private property around so as always respect that as much as you can but it is a very very pretty setting here and uh, like I said, the weight limit on this one, I think it's 10 tons, 12, it's 12 tons. So there you have it. And uh, that concludes our covered bridge journey for today. But uh, now we're gonna head back to Shawnee, pack up, head home. And uh, in just a few short days though, we're leaving for the beach. So make sure you're subscribed because that is gonna be an epic adventure. <laughs>